What is going on guys? It's Nick from Surf Casting Island. Today's topic of discussion is going to be swim baits and shad bodies. Um, both these style baits are an essential tool in my surf bag, both for the spring and the fall. Um, typically speaking, I like to fish them more so in the spring, which I'll get further into depth. But this video in particular is going to be segregated into two segments. Me talking about um, swim baits that you have to rig before you fish, aka put on a jig head, how to properly put on a jig head, so on and so forth. And the second segment is going to be talking about um, swim baits that are pre-rigged, so a shad body, a storm wild eye, something that already has a weight integrated into the swim bait, heavy well. So stay tuned. Okay, so for the first part of the video, I will be discussing swim baits that you have to pre-rig before you go out there and fish. Um, something that you have to hook on to a jig head as opposed to something that is factory pre-rigged that has a shad body, like a wild eye or anything like that, that has a weight system integrated into it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first style bait I'm going to show you is a four inch Bass Assassin Sea Shad in Glow. The whites as well as the chartreuses are great. I field tested them. They produce very, very well in the early spring. Um, so this is, the, this is what it looks like when I rigged it up. This is on a half ounce VMC boxer head jig. Very strong hook, very sharp hook. Um, typically speaking, I love using these in the back bays. I haven't really ventured to too much up front, not really necessary in the inlets as well. Um, again, this is a early spring talk. I'm talking end of March throughout pretty much the whole month of April, I'd say. Um, so what do I imitate with this style bait? This is great for killies, bay anchovies. Um, juvenile spearing, juvenile um, killy, so on and so forth. Um, I'll even use this style bait when the cinder worm hatches by the end of April, beginning of May, if there are still bass in my back bay areas, depending on if we have a delayed season or not. We did have a delayed season this year, so yes, I did have fish well into the beginning of May on this style bait. Um, so the next style bait I'm going to show you is a little bit smaller of a profile. This is great, especially on the cinder worm hatch. And if there are tiny, tiny killies around, this is again, the Bass Assassin Little Boss. I have it rigged up on the same thing, half ounce boxer head jig by VMC, cannot beat these jigs. Um, you see mine's a little off how I rigged it. I probably have to re-rig it at some point because the swimmer is slanted down. Not the biggest deal. It'll still catch fish. But typically when you are rigging up um, soft plastics on a jig head, you want to just have just the amount of hook point coming through the throat of the back of the jig head. So if you see the shad body, this shad body I'm talking about, or I should say swim bait because that's in the second part of the discussion, that it's not slanted downwards and it's not slanted upwards and there's no slack towards the head, which means the throat of the hook is evenly spaced through the back of the um, swim bait. If I were to put not enough hook point through this swim bait, the shad body would rise up. So the tail would be up here and swimming like this. If I put too much hook point exposed through this swim bait, the shad body would be slanted downwards and it would look a little more like this. This one's not uh, a little bit pronounced, not too, too bad. Um, but just a simple tip, it could make a little bit of a difference. And the last type of plastic I'm gonna show in terms of these size baits is the Kitek Swim Impact. This is a four and a half inch, which is bigger than the other two I showed. So this would be good if you have a mix of um, 
bigger spearing around, bigger killies, um, even a great imitation, in my opinion, of sand eels, juvenile sand eels, but again, that would be a better option, I'd say, would be the six, seven inch tsunami sand eel. Um, again, if you really want to go that route, because then now you're imitating something outside of what these are originally designed to imitate, in my opinion. Um, and again, the rib style baits have a very different action than that of the swimmer of the uh, sea shad, if you will. This has a much tighter cadence. The rib style has a much wider cadence. And whether it applies or not, I haven't really put it into much thought, to be honest. But in terms of freshwater fishing, you want a wider cadence as the water warms up, as opposed to fishing a tighter cadence bait when the water's colder. Whether or not that applies, I don't know. Don't quote me on it, but it's just, um, you know, I feel like it was an interesting interjection, if you will. But, um... Yeah, last but not least, the last bait I'm going to show you guys, which is totally different from any other bait I've showed you so far, what is the 5-inch um, Z-Man Diesel Minnow. These are absolute killers on a jig head. I usually throw these on a Cadiz 3 quarter or 1 ounce, um, as opposed to the smaller baits I've showed you. And these are awesome, awesome baits. And the reason being is you could use them when the bluefish are around. I know, you know, I tend to stray away from soft plastics when there's blues around because anyone that, has, that hasn't that has been living under a rock in the fishing community knows if there's bluefish are around and you're using swim baits or paddle tails, it's a waste of time because they just chew the tails off. Even the guys that fish um, mojos on the boats trolling, the bluefish just rip them off, no problem. Um, this is the opening night color, same thing, just rigged on a Cadis um, jig head. Phenomenal, phenomenal bait. You can see how this has the big old paddle tail, has a very wide cadence, very flexible. And a funny story is about this particular color and style bait. I was fishing the Southwest Nassau beaches with my buddy Sean when he was home because he lives out of state. And there are fish um, bass blitzing on peanut bunker everywhere for acres upon acres for the as the far as the eye could see, pretty much. Wouldn't touch a bucktail, wouldn't touch a tin, wouldn't touch a plug, mag daughter, SP middle, whatever you threw at them, they didn't hit. Uh, I was ready, to, I was so frustrated, I was ready to call it quits. But I ended up saying, you know, I had a couple of these um, diesel minnows. In my bag, I left my shad bodies in the car because it was late, late fall. I highly doubted that um, any type of big bait, other than the exception of herring, which we do get a lucky bite every now and then, would be gone. So I left my other shad bodies, which I'll be talking about later in this video, in the car. So these are the only plastics I had in the car. Um, in my bag, I should say. F kid you not, tie one of these on, first cast, Boom, I get a fish. Second cast, boom, I keep connecting. I'm like, Sean, just try this. He first cast, boom, he gets one. So yes, matching the hatch is ideal. This looks like a peanut bunker. This is what I would use if there are peanut bunker around, juvenile bunker. Um, even when we get the finger mullet in September, great imitation of that um, under those circumstances. And yes, these will hold up against the bluefish. They will not rip the tails off. I field tested them. They work. Um, but that's a stretch for me to use them when there's blues around. Cause I typically like to use, um, lures that are less expensive and less of things I want to go through. So like tins, poppers, any, th any type of metal baits, um, so on and so forth. But, um, yeah, that pretty much concludes this part of the video. Um, next part of the video, I will be talking about um, swim baits such as shad bodies that have a weight system integrated into them already. So thank you and stay tuned. Okay, so now we're going to talk about shad bodies. And shad bodies have a special place in my heart because they have saved me in many, many back bait applications. And like I keep saying over and over again, this is not a type of bait that I typically throw on the open beach or inlets because there are better options. 
So why are they so effective when many lures tend to struggle? Well, Bill Wetzel, um, he touched upon this actually. Say if you have a un, uh, an undercut marsh and these bass are dug in. So an undercut marsh means is that you have a layout of grass or some sort of debris, but um, it's pocketed inward. So you have the grass and then you have like a U-shape almost and the bass cruise that channel. There are certain spots and instances where the bass will hang out underneath that undercut marsh and wait for bait fish to ambush that area. So why are the shad bodies so important in these types of situations? Well, if you were to throw a jig head with a uh, swim bait on it, it would sink too fast. It would sink just like a bucktail bottom. That's too fast for um, a bass generally to chase that out and look natural. Um, a wake bait like a metal lip or a red fin is not going to get down because those are subsurface topwater baits. And um, so what are you left with? You're left with the uh, suspension of the middle of the water column. And the great thing about the disbursement of these baits is that the weight is almost like a rectangular shape on the bottom. It's very wide and it catches a lot of water. So what does that mean? It pretty much means that it has a very slow fall and a very high rise when you snap it because of the shape. It's almost triangular if you look at the shad body. So when you rip that up, it's a fast rip and a slow fall. So it looks like a struggling bait fish in that matter. A lot of surface area is caught when this is falling in the water column. It gives the bass a natural presentation and just the amount of, um, just the right amount of time for these things to react and say this looks right as opposed to something that doesn't look right or something they're not keen in on. This is the four inch tsunami swim shad. I will also be talking about the storms. Um, and how I feel like they, they all these um, shad bodies I have here run a completely different purpose of that in terms of the swim baits you put on a jig head. They have a total different fall and a slightly different cadence. And that is key when you're fishing certain areas that may have an undercut marsh. Um, these have been killer when everything else you cannot connect on. Um, but again, the four and the this is the package with the four inch shad bodies come in they also come in the three inch which i have here but if i have to go to the three inch at that point i just go to a small swim bait like a like i was talking about the kytex or the um the sea shad bass assassins but this is a great peanut bunker imitation um you know little shad imitation something like that it's literally what it looks like i wouldn't really use it for much of anything else um, again, I, I don't go crazy over colors. People think yellows, pinks, green, uh, greens, reds. I keep it simple. With these shad bodies, I throw two colors. I throw bunker and uh, pearl white. And they, you know, if the water is very stained and I need something that will stand out. Um, and that's it. Literally, that's it. Um, this is what the um, bag looks like for the four inch. And then, which I have the five inch here, which again, I would use, sorry, which I would use under the same application. Um, it's a perfect imitation of, like I said, some, some type of bunker, so on and so forth. Um, just as a size comparison, I know I'm all over the place right now. Put this down. This is the four inch with the five inch. Again, the only way I would decipher where I'm gonna use both of these sizes is the depth of the undercut marsh or, or lay down or any type of shallow water I'm fishing. Um, if I know there's really, really big bait around, I have wide open space, um, maybe I gotta get a little more distance or maybe I gotta get a little uh, further down the water column. I have the six inch here. Um, I have the package as well. Swim shads, these are great. Um, now you're getting into adult bunker territory with these. Um, great back bay swim baits. Not really much of a difference in what I'm trying to imitate here. Again, I'm trying to imitate a shad or 
you know, an adult bunker, like I keep saying over and over again, because this is literally looks like what they eat um, in their diet. Um, so this will bring me to my final tsunami bait. So say this is the only one, pretty much an exception I would fish strictly for inlets or a heavy rip up front. This is, I don't know the name, but I'm sure you guys seen these in the stores. These come in a two pack. Typically, I think these are two or three ounce weighted. Some guys even use these in the canals. This, this is a definitely, definitely, definitely an adult bunker imitation. If you really gotta get down on a rip, you know, cast out really far, push into that deeping water, or uh, that deep water. <clears throat> but if I have to take a stretch like this, I'm pretty much either going to go to a heavy bucktail, an ounce and a half, two ounce bucktail, or maybe a bottle or needle, depending on the conditions, which way the water is moving. If I have a rip, if I don't have a rip, um, then I'm going to go to something like that. But out of all of these, obviously, this is probably the biggest. Um, this is a big fish bait. This and the six inch are big fish baits, in my opinion. Um, yes, elephants eat peanuts, but as a whole, you know, the bigger the bait, the bigger the fish you're typically going to catch. Um, and just as a side note, I do have the little storm wild eyes. I feel like these are a little lighter. So if I'm really fishing a really, really, really shallow lay down, maybe I'll go with the wild eyes. Um, they work great. This is the white. I don't, I don't have any of the uh, bunker on hand, but again, these are very, very effective lures in the back. Like I keep stressing because I feel like people either underutilize them or they miscategorize them and some people say that the swim baits on jig heads are the same as the shad bodies that have an integrated weight system no they have totally two totally different purposes um in um, water disbursement and getting down castability um you know i feel that the um the, the jig heads tend to cast better because they're front loaded. I tend to do better. The weight system on the shad bodies are kind of dispersed. So you kind of get them to tumble and so on and so forth. So you got to take that into consideration too. How far are you trying to cast, where you're fishing, um, what the bait is, so on and so forth. So this pretty much concludes um, my outlook on shad bodies and how I use them, why I use them, and why are they so effective um so without further ado if you like this video please like comment hit that subscribe button don't forget to follow my public instagram page at surfcasting underscore the underscore island um thank you and have a nice day